hey guys so now let's learn our next 25th topic trigger scope what are the important points you must know before appearing for the exam i'm going to let you know so let's first understand how the trigger scope is going to work drag and drop the trigger scope activity there are two different bodies inside the trigger scope one is known as the trigger and the other is known as the actions so what is this trigger is used for what is this action is used for let's understand this with an example now here if you go to the activities and simply type trigger there are multiple different trigger based activities which are called user event activities for example the user is clicking or the user is starting a process let's say user is starting a notepad likewise there are on element um, attribute change trigger on element state change trigger so all of this you must have a bit of understanding what are this for at least by highlighting the mouse you should understand now here what i am doing i am using a click trigger activity and using the click trigger activity i am going to monitor anyone if the user is going to click on the new button okay if the user is going to click on the new button in the snipping tool it will automatically trigger and the moment it triggers right there are a couple of actions that you can define in the sequence so here first of all before we look, get on to the actions i wanted to understand what is this arcs variable okay this is very important variable you must have a good knowledge now this arcs variable comes with multiple different properties for example if you simply type arcs and put a dot what happens you would see there are multiple different properties one is event info the other one is the exception the third one is trigger name trigger type this four properties you should have knowledge what they are for okay very important point so here what i am doing i have used few log message activities and i have written args dot event info args dot exception args dot trigger name args dot trigger type and also there is something called args dot trigger type dot full name okay so all these properties i have kept it so that we can see what is the output of all these properties and understand based on that so let's do a quick run okay and understand how the entire trigger scope is going to work so first of all let me hit on debug and i am going to op keep on the snipping tool open let's say as a user now what this will do it will continuously going to monitor if the user is going to click on the new so you can see it is continuously monitoring okay it's continuously monitoring if the user is going to hit on the new button until then it will be keep on running it will keep on running okay let's say right now i'm going to hit on new okay so now i'm going to minimize just to see what's going to happen so here you can see the action has been executed so what you have understood when anybody as per the defined trigger activity it could be click trigger it could be process start trigger based on that if the trigger get activated then the actions are performed this is the first point and this arcs variable contains information around that so for example arcs dot event info if you look at the output the very first output ui path dot code dot event info okay this is what the output comes then arcs dot exception because there is no exception or error ha happened during the trigger activity the trigger got executed so there is no exception it is blank okay remember that then arcs dot trigger name this is very important the arcs dot trigger name actually gives you the name of the activity got triggered here what happened which activity got triggered the click activity got triggered so whatever the name is defined for this activity the exact name can be fetched using arcs dot trigger name let's say you wanted to have know which trigger got activated let's say you have got multiple triggers inside this so there is a question also in you this one you must have seen in the practice test there are multiple triggers if any one of the trigger get executed then this uh, trigger name is going to provide the name of that trigger. okay that is very important to know so now you can see it is saying click trigger push button dot new and you can fetch this simply by writing arcs dot trigger name okay this you have understood then arcs dot trigger type this trigger type generally tells you what kind of a click trigger version 2 version 3 it could be so this generally gives you the activity uh, more of a, it's more of a, it's uh, type okay and then there is something called full name click trigger dot version 2 this is not much of a difference which i could find but again the very important property i would recommend you to at least know the arcs dot trigger name okay and this four 
properties also you should know event info um, and then trigger name and then trigger type and then trigger type but full name okay fine now one thing you want to see i have run it but still it's monitoring do you see it's still monitoring see it did not stop let's say i'm going to click on new so what would happen once again this execution will start so it is continuously monitoring it is not stopping it is continue see it has happened and now if i once again click it is a once again going to execute let me minimize this okay so you can see it is executing because i am doing in a debug mode i am minimizing otherwise it will automatically capture all this so this much you have understood this continuously monitoring so you can see it is still monitoring so how do you come out of this there is a property mentioned in the trigger scope um, what is that here they have mentioned if you would like to break it please note that in order to interrupt the trigger scope activity handling sequence the break activity should be used very important now where do you where do you really use this i am going to show you that go to sequence 3 so in the sequence 3 what i have done let me stop that so here what i have done to break to come out of it right once it executed let's come out of it in that case uh, come out of the trigger scope otherwise the trigger scope will continuously monitor within that you can't get on to the next step of your workflow sequence in that case they are recommending if you would like to have to come out of the trigger scope then use a break activity in your sequence in your action sequence i'm using a break activity now you see let's say i'm going to run it okay and uh, let's keep the snipping tool so the execution uh, just started okay so now now it's monitoring okay now it's monitoring let me click on it okay just click on it and it's not going to interrupt the user it's just in the background it is going to monitor now look at it what happened the break got executed and it has completely come out of it so it's not now it's not monitoring it's it's already come out of it you can see the highlight button is not there and the run button is also gone right stop button and all that is gone so using a break activity so this is another point to know now what is the next thing i want to teach you in the trigger scope on the right side there are certain properties for example sequential concurrent and one time this is also very important for you to know what are this so for example if i hit on sequential what happens so here um, you should not use a break activity okay so i am not using a break activity um, because if i use a break activity anyways it's going to break out it's not going to monitor depending on situation you can use it but what is the meaning of a sequence uh, sequential sequential means all the activities that you have mentioned inside the action sequence is going to execute one after the other then next like a sequence right like next so this is how it's going to run so here the definition also clearly tells you in the uh, trigger scope um, this one and how do you get this kind of documents is quite simple okay all you do right click on the trigger scope and there is something called help button if you hit on the help button it's going to open the page for you so you don't have to really literally search in google simply right click and help on that activity you will get the relevant updated page okay now uh, i was talking about sequential so let's see the definition of sequential what is the definition says the definition says actions are executed one after the other so you saw that you know the first execution that we have done one after the other the normal way so by default sequential will be there so normally it is going to execute one after the other if you are selecting concurrent what where is the concurrent is in the same drop down if i highlight the trigger scope here i have the concurrent concurrent means let's say there are multiple different activities concurrently uh, at, the, at the same time it can execute any activity there is no sequence is going to follow let's say there are five activities ten activities three activities at a time the next three or any in any order that is hard to really see as an output but you should at least know the definition actions execution can overlap so anything can happen concurrently parallelly it can run okay then the very important one is one time execute one action and exit so because if i have to go for it i should not use a break activity right so here if i select one time and try to execute this what would happen it is anyways going to run it once and come out of it let's say you don't want to run it multiple times you just want to monitor only one time instead of using a break activity this is the smartest way of making one time okay so you can see the monitoring has started now let me open this and hit on the new button and let me minimize it 
okay so see after this is going to stop after this is going to stop okay you can see the execution stop so this is the usage of instead of using a break activity this is the usage of trigger scope scheduling mode here i can keep it as one time okay sequentially if you keep it is going to continuously monitor Con concurrent also it's going to continuously monitor just that activities will not be run in a sequence one after the other it can run in any order one time it will only do it for monitor it only for one time once the execution is complete it will come out of it okay so this much you should understand and you must read this documentation entirely so i have highlighted few points i have discussed all these points so please do go through this entirely and also one more important note here if a trigger is received while a process is paused it fires after the process resumes okay so it will fire after the process resume so these are the important points that you should remember now let's answer this question okay in this question what is being done here there is a click trigger activity there are three different click trigger activities on three different buttons let's say bank customer service and reports if anybody is clicking on any of this any one of this then the switch activity has to be configured so how do you configure arcs dot trigger name arcs dot trigger name like that if you configure the switch activity what would happen whatever button is been clicked it is going to tell you the name that we have learned so here the question is very simple how should the developer configure the switch expression property and case fields okay so here there are given couple of um, couple of options uh, full name this is not going to help you you saw the output event.info it's not going to help you trigger.name this is going to help you so this is the right answer Arcs dot trigger name so it is going to give you you can in the case one in the switch case you can put the click trigger bank and then click trigger customer service click trigger reports so let's say you would like to have a practical of it i would recommend you to do it on your own otherwise i already have created a um, uh, video okay if you google it i think you should be able to find that uh, trigger scope ui path uh, okay yeah so this is this is the video ui path trigger scope uh, process start trigger ui path example uh, click trigger yeah this is the one i think this is where i have explained multiple click trigger with switch keys so this video also you can take benefit from and you can see how the execution happens and why one should go for a dot trigger name but with this explanation you must have got it if not you would like to see complete details please do follow these videos so thank you guys for watching let's move on to our next topic